you know that great products are the successful marriage between business vision, intuitive design, and powerful tech. Going back and forth between designers and developers is a natural part of the process where both teams aim to deliver something that fits the project requirements. I am Mariana Garcia, the design lead at UserActive, and today I want to tell you six things that you need to know to reduce the amount of miscommunication that happens between designers and developers. During our design sprints, many hours are dedicated to finding the right balance between these three. And the collaboration between designers and developers is crucial to make this investment reach maximum effectiveness. So let's dive in. By the end of this video, you will have some of the best practices on achieving a good synchronicity between all teams. First of all, let's talk about a common gap that happens early in the project. Jumping directly into what design can bring to the table without having a conversation about the current tech stack or the design systems available. This early communication is key. By knowing the technology and the tools developers prefer, we can create designs that are not only visually appealing, but also implementable. But how do you reduce this early gap? By bringing your tech lead or a senior front-end developer to the conversation early on, dissipating together any doubt on what's already implemented and what needs to move forward with the new design requirements can help avoid miscommunications later on. Share with your designers documentation about the tech stack that you are already using and any design system that you're working with. If no design system is in place, request from your designers suggestions based on the scope of the project, aim to achieve an agreement with your tech team. Let's move on now on to leveraging existing design assets. Unless we are talking about a complete redesign, we try to integrate the current state of design. For that, having at hand any design files, whether it's just light branding like colors, typography and logos, or a fully developed design system and flows will speed up the communication between the two departments. Moreover, having at hand previous design files can provide your designers with valuable insights into the project's past decisions, changes of direction, and solutions that your team has already tried. If you have any specific questions about aligning designers and developers, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Next, let's talk about aligning the design approach with the product expectations. As designers, we need to understand your vision for the user experience development of your product. After understanding the big picture, we ask things such as, is there any urgent deadline we need to know about? Which features are the current focus of for your project? Are you looking into a refreshment of the flows or more of a visual reskinning of your current functionality? Do you feel comfortable if we suggest changes such as renaming sections and regrouping functionality to improve how your users navigate through your current platform? With questions like these, we look into aligning our design approach with the project's expect expectations, allowing us to determine whether we can push the visual boundaries or if it is better to work closely to the existing implementations. Another thing that is important is establishing personal connections with developers. Building personal connections with developers is a priority for us. It's a no-brainer that a good connection will encourage co-creation, which will turn into an overall better build solution. But what builds a good connection, especially now that remote work is a reality? Some of the things that we do are, we initiate one-to-one -one calls to introduce everyone from both teams. By getting to know a person and establishing an open communication from the beginning, we lay the groundwork for a successful partnership. We ask the developers what's important for, to them looking into working together with us, and each case is so different. It can go from pushing the technology to a new limit all the way to how we communicate with them. We try to factor these comments and it, this allows us to create a good working model between the two disciplines. Now, talking about continuous collaboration during the design phase, as designers, our designs only see the light of the day if they're feasible, meaning we have to cross-check with developers along the way. Based on our experience, we have a general idea on where our flows can require extra development. When we see that some changes we are proposing can take more development time than we agreed, we bring it up. We ask if it fits into the time budget that the tech team has available. We ask for their opinion, and as mentioned before, great teamwork makes dream work. The times we have worked with developers to direct the solution, it has turned into a great implementable user experience. We take design as seriously as code. We acknowledge that technical limitations are important, but we continuously bring the user perspective into the affected flow to find the balance between both so that you can hit your business goal. Lastly, we continue to support you as the development continues too. In some cases, we have created documentation to support this communication. This documentation outlines how the design is supposed to work and highlight important use cases. It serves as a valuable resource, conveying the reasoning behind user experience decisions and facilitating seamless knowledge transfer. By following these practices, we have witnessed remarkable improvements in product quality. I recommend you to implement any of these in your own working pipeline. 
happy developers and happy designers make happy PMs and founders. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.